Today, we honor not just our 75 years of broadcasting to generations. We turn our attention to you, our loyal and wonderful viewers. The love you've given us and those who came before us can't be forgotten. They wrap their arms around you. They love you hard. <laughs> they are fierce. And, and, and that's it's good to, 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 to have that, especially when you are a newcomer. And Anquanette Jameson, we all lovingly call Q, says especially when you're going through a struggle. Q retired early after a multiple sclerosis diagnosis, just shy of a decade as morning anchor alongside Alan Lee. The loyalty and love of the Fox 2 family, the viewers, in part, got her through it. When I announced why I was leaving, I was not prepared for the mountain of uh, get well cards that I received. I received a lot of get well cards and um, I didn't think that people cared that much about me because, I mean, you turn on your TV and your voice in the back of the room while people are getting ready, but for some people to go to a, a store and pick out a card and cards are expensive <laughs> and, and 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 buy a card for me and and write a note and put a stamp on it and go and mail it at that um and um it touched me deeply something that Huel perkins feels he experienced this decidedly detroit dedication and love for three decades 25 years of that alongside monica gale they've given me a home they've given me a place to call family, you know, of course, I, I say this all the time, although I'm not from here, my heart is here and will always be here because in a real sense, our viewers have become a part of my family and I hope in some way I become a part of theirs. People come here and they just don't leave. They, they, and, and there's a reason for that. It's good place, it's good people, um, it's home and so, um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I came here. I'm still here. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and that's because of the people here of this, this area have welcomed me so wholeheartedly. I can't go. It's the unique, beautiful bond that viewers of Southeast Michigan have that makes Q, Huel, Chuck, Monica, Sherry, Murray, and countless others grateful. It makes us all proud to share our 75th anniversary with you. You know, you, you get all the good feels when you watch that story you because, sure Taryn, you know, having been here for so many years, over a decade, I felt, feel it every single time you're out. It's amazing. The viewers make you feel a part of their family. Yes. That's something that you just don't feel everywhere else. No, you look back, and it's been a lot of fun to see some of the file video, but the styles may have changed, <laughs> and of course the technology changed, but one thing that remains the same is our love for the viewers and what they give to us on a daily basis, and we appreciate it. You can hurt right there. No, oh, it's such a special bond, the one that we celebrate here today, 75 years later. Well, stay with us to see more of your favorite personalities over the years and some of the moments that shaped us all. rather be bitten by a rattlesnake than interviewed by 60 Minutes. But in Detroit, people have a different worry. Oh, no. Not Channel 2. Oh. From police to pimps. Channel 2! Get out of my face, man! To pint-sized pyromaniacs. Channel 2. Nobody has broken more stories than Channel 2. Who knows where we'll turn up next, Preston? Not... That's right, the bad guys hated to see us coming. Our team of problem solver investigators had a lot to do with it. Scott Lewis spent more than two decades on the team. Scott was best known for busting government workers who were caught doing just about everything on the job except for actually working. Fox News' Rob Wolchek caught up with Lewis for a look back. How's it feel? Oh, it uh, feels like home. 
really does. And we're glad you're home, Scott Lewis. After all, your investigative stories were part of our homes, at least on the TV set, for more than 20 years. Scott Lewis investigations were unlike anything anyone had ever seen anywhere. Let me tell you how I got onto these guys. I got a tip from a Fox 2 viewer who kept seeing those city trucks in the bar parking lot. Already established as a top-notch reporter, in the late 90s, the formation of the Fox 2 Problem Solvers Unit was what took Scott to a whole new level. The first big hit was the Pothole Patchers. We went out uh, on a Monday morning. We had a producer, three photographers, myself. We had body cameras. It may not look like much now, but this was groundbreaking, following crews of taxpayer-paid city workers from the moment they arrived in the morning till they called it quits was something no one had done before. What these guys did or didn't do during their shift was eye-opening. What they didn't do was much pothole patching. What they did do was stop for breakfast, booze, and bathroom breaks right on the street. Scott showed it all. It was so outrageous, we just thought the presentation should be a little outrageous, too. 10 a.m., it's Miller time. Scott injected a lot of humor, popular music, and a can-you-believe-this attitude to the story that had everyone talking. The news story was such a big hit, it was news. The next day I got up and there was a story in the free press about my story. After that, Scott's busted on the job stories became appointment TV. Once we started doing these, we realized that um, this thing of loafing on the job was kind of an epidemic in Detroit. It was all over the place. And not only did these stories get a lot of attention and draw a lot of eyes to the TV, we fixed a lot of that. And the motto of the Problem Solvers Unit, we're not going to just tell you the news, we're going to show it to you, was not only popular, but a Effective. It was kind of like government by embarrassment. We just had fun, you know, creating these stories, and, and we worked a lot of humor into our scripts, so it was just, they were the days, Rob, the best time of my life. Goofing on lazy workers was a unique style of storytelling, but Scott was still that serious journalist, always on the street, liked and trusted by everyone. I got a tip, uh, a call from a prostitute, calling from a payphone on the east side and said somebody was out there killing prostitutes. Scott began connecting what were thought to be random murders together. I called the Detroit police, the guy in charge of homicide, and he goes, serial killer? What serial killer? We haven't had any series of killings. Eventually, the Mack Avenue Killer Task Force was formed. And they uh, ended up arresting a guy named Shelley Brooks. He charged them, I think, with six, convicted of them four, and, and thought he had probably killed at least a dozen women. Scott left WJBK more than 10 years ago and started his own private investigation company, working in semi-retirement from his Florida home. I've seen you on, like, Netflix and some of these shows for some of your PI work. So mm -hmm. you're you're still uh, kind of a famous guy, right? Yeah. The only difference is I don't have to slap the makeup on and you know get out on the TV. Slap on and the pancake. Yeah, I slap <laughs> on the cake, as we used to say. I only see my old partner from the Problem Solver Unit once every couple of years, but we always click. Scott is a great friend and a mentor, and taking him on a stroll around Fox 2, it's obvious I'm not the only one who loves the guy. And the feeling is mutual. For Scott Lewis, perhaps the best investigative reporter in the 75-year history of WJBK-TV, every time he was on the air, it was an event. I remember coming out to, to do my pieces live and you know at 10 o'clock and um, the excitement and the nervousness you know people think you don't look nervous on TV but you are a little bit you got the butterflies but um, yeah a lot of great memories a lot of great memories. Yeah, we always looked forward to see what Scott mm -hmm. had uh, to air that night. His stories were amazing and always brought change. Oh, they always did. And even like the the, the Tanya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan Breaking saga, that. that she, he broke that story internationally, which mm -hmm. is just an incredible reporter. Yeah, we miss you, Scott. Yeah. Well, we were in the problem-solving business long before the current unit launched in the late 90s. Before that, WJBK investigators were known as eyewitness news troubleshooters. Whether you had a lousy landlord, crooked contractor, or needed advice on staying safe, we had you covered. Here's Dan Williams in 1986 with some things to avoid while celebrating with fireworks. Sometime tonight or this weekend, I know at least one of you will either have your fingers or part of your hand or part of your face blown off. And that's because instead of playing with something safe like a sparkler, you insisted on playing with an M80 or a cherry bomb. 
But before that happens, let me at least show you how powerful those little explosives are. That's the force of just one illegal M70 firecracker. That's the force of an illegal M80. And here's that pack of illegal fireworks you may carry in your car this weekend. These were reenactments of what has really happened to people like you and me. And aren't there better ways to have a happy 4th of July than putting yourself in danger? And that's our Consumer Corner for this week. I'm Joe Glover. I'm Robbie Timmons. Now join Robbie and me as we lead off two fast-moving hours of news and information. Beverly Payne and Harry Gallagher join us together with sports from Raylene and Charlie Neal. Weather with Barry Zavan and Don Paul and reports from Sky 2. Current news of the nation and the world with the incomparable Walter Cronkite. Followed by an exciting edition of PM Magazine. Join us. into the 80s with TV2 Eyewitness News. The new decade demands faster, more accurate information. Our satellite Earth Receive Station brings it to you at the speed of light. Color Weather Radar tracks conditions instantly from weather radar systems across the country. And when local news makes a fast break, Sky 2 gets it off the ground and down to you. TV2 brings you the look of Detroit faster and more accurately than ever before possible. Move into the 80s. TV2 Eyewitness News. Boy, our graphics have come a long way in the last sure 40 years, have. right? Doesn't look like an old video game. How fun, though. You know, we've been digging through the Channel 2 archives over the past few months, and as we have, Fox News' Amy Lang has been helping us curate stories about the people, places, and events that make this city so special. And she joins us with a trip back to the late 1960s. If you grew up in Detroit, this was a summertime favorite well into the 1980s, right, Amy? Oh, my gosh. Ruth and Taryn, after the rebellion of 1967, the TV2 Swimmobile started touring Detroit's neighborhoods. It was a commitment to the community, but for the kids, it was fun in the sun they would never forget. What's the best time of year? Well, that's easy enough. Summer, of course. In the summer of 1968, it was called the Old Swimming Hole, a swimming pool on wheels that TV2 donated to the city in the aftermath of the 1967 rebellion. Last summer, TV2 put a swimming hole on wheels, and this summer is no different. Today, we presented the city of Detroit with a second one. It became obvious to us that only one portable version of the old swimming hole just couldn't be enough. Therefore, we undertook the construction of yet a second TV2 swimmobile. Already, TV2 is planning to donate yet a third swimmobile next year. Give them a big wave! Yay! You could say it became a bit of a tradition. If you're still doubting that summer is really here, doubt no more. The TV2 swimmobiles are back in service, a sure sign that summer has arrived at last. This is the sixth and newest of the swimmobiles that will be operating in Detroit, and the 1977 grand opening was reason enough for Mayor Coleman Young to shake hands with residents in the Prairie Six Mile area and talk about the importance of recreation. The summer promises to be very hot, and this war as you can tell, is cool. It attracts uh, young people who, in many cases, don't have anywhere else to go. And it's so important that we have adequate recreational facilities in order to keep young people off the street. Which is why WJVK partnered with the city of Detroit to provide some cool summer fun in neighborhoods that might not have access to a pool. As you know, we look upon this as one of the major things that we do, especially out in the community. Six swimmobiles visit 12 neighborhoods per day, Monday through Friday, all summer until Labor Day. Every summer, mm -hmm. about 50,000 youngsters throughout the city of Detroit take advantage of this mobile program. Is it really worth it, though, since you have to empty it and fill it and move around and all of that? Oh, yes. Uh, there are areas in the city where we not only don't have a swimming pool of our own, but there are still a number of areas where the mobile units are very important. Each swimmobile carries a lifeguard who gives informal swimming lessons and water safety tips. Today's cool weather didn't discourage several enthusiastic water babies who lined up before the swimmobile was filled just to be the first kids in the neighborhood to take a TV2 swimmobile dip. 
The TV2 Swimmobile, a sure sign of summer and a very fond memory for many children growing up in the city of Detroit in the 1970s and 80s. They would pull up on our block and they would access uh, the fire hydrants to fill the pool up. We would be waiting for our turn to get into the Swimmobile. Michael Williams, now a manager with Detroit Parks and Recreation Swim Program, remembers it well. It was just wonderful. Everybody had the opportunity. The Swimmobile would be there for a full day and give us all the access that we needed. Oh, great memories, great memories. Yeah, if you wanted to count the worth of the program, I suppose looking at the faces of the kids is the best way. <laughs> yeah. Woody Wall is TV2 News, Detroit. It really is so fun seeing the rich history of Channel 2. And for many, it's a trip down memory lane. And so, speaking of trips, Fox 2's Brandon Hudson took a ride with a familiar face to our longtime viewers, Mr. Al Allen, for a special edition of Roundabout. Uh, we ran into each other, I met you in the newsroom a couple, a couple weeks, a few weeks ago. Right, uh, right. When you came through for the 75th anniversary. Uh, but look, I wanted to say I had to have you here in the car so we could actually have a full conversation this time. I know that you're the king of the overpass here. Everyone I've spoken to has said, oh, Al Allen, I used to watch him under the overpass every snowy morning. How did you that know, start? I, you know, I did thousands of stories, all right? <laughs> but all people remember Al Allen on the over, overpass with snow coming down. That's all they thought about. Right. right. <laughs> and then they would say, why did he let that guy go out there like that? <laughs> you know, uh, what about the younger ones? Nobody else wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody else wanted to get up early in the morning, like two, one, two or three o'clock, and get out there in bad weather. So we did it. Mm -hmm. But I have to thank, you know, the photographers who did the work, the heavy loads and so forth. Mm -hmm. I just stood up there and looked cute. That's all I right. did, you know, and tell a story. So the first day I went on, I had a mentor. His name was Joe Weaver. And he says, Al, he was the automotive reporter. Okay. Because at that time, we had automotive, we had special reporters doing special things. The auto industry was uh, so big. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, it was. And he says, Al, a couple of things. He says, first of all, take your photographers to lunch. Make sure that you're well taken care of and pay the bill for them. The second day, I actually did my first live shot. Driver walks up to me and says, uh, Mr. Allen, uh, you're in radio. Only a few hundred people heard you. Now you're on TV. Oh, wow. Several thousand people will see you. Now, how do you feel? <laughs> I feel fine. That's incredible. He knew really how to do it. He is a legend, right? I mean, oh, yeah. we just love Al Allen. Everyone does. I it, think everybody's big memory is him on the overpass. Yes, yes. Certainly, um, but he said his, what, his secret was always just uh, getting out of the vehicle right before. I got to tell you, when, when I took over his spot in 2012, he pulled me in the corner. He says, I don't care what the producers tell you. You stay in that live truck in the heat as long as you can. If they get nervous because they didn't see you out there already, that's okay. That's on them. And I followed his advice. Sorry, producers. <laughs> I mean, he knows what he's talking about. He yeah. has a lot of experience. Thanks, Amy, for that. Yeah. Sure. And blast from the past. Well, Channel 2 has been helping Metro Detroit get their days off to a great start for a really long time. Our shows have looked different over the decades, but we hope that we've brought you some joy along with the weather and traffic. Let's take a look back. Hi, I'm Vic Caputo. We're building a new show here at your TV2 called Good Morning Detroit. It starts Monday, January 17th, and every weekday morning at 7 o'clock, and I'll be hosting it. Now, I really can't tell you much about it, except that it certainly will be different from anything you're used to watching at 7 in the morning. This is Fox 2 News Morning. News that works for you. This is why meteorologists don't wear green. <laughs> it's why we're not allowed. It's the one color that we can't wear. It's not even heavy. I thought this would be like heavy, but. <laughs> I feel like that camera's gonna fly up and hit me in the face. Oh my.
my gosh. <laughs> We need to bring that song back. Yeah, and then a little thumbs up at the end. There Why you go. Not? Right. All right. <laughs> it's hard to believe now, but at one time, there were only, what, four or five channels on the dial. And some of you out there may also remember some of the original programming we aired, especially those kid shows. Yeah, here's a clown who told you to drink your milk, an animal lover who taught the wonders of a jungle, yeah. and a campy Saturday horror show featuring a guy in a coffin. Mm. Who is that man? Or who was he? That was Sir Graves Gashley, who for 15 years scared the daylights out of thousands of little kids who tuned in Channel 2 on Saturday afternoons to see their favorite horror movies. Lawson Deming, a professional actor and radio announcer, came to TV2 in January of 1967. His assignment? To make those old black and white scary movies a little more interesting. Milky the Clown, the host of Milky's Party Time, which was Detroit's most popular children's show during the 1950s and early 60s. If you were growing up during that time, no doubt you tuned in every Saturday to hear those magic words. Well, the kids of the 50s remember the magic that made it a success. I was in love with Milky the Clown. He was my favorite clown. That must have been in the old days. Don Hunt was Buona Don, doing a morning animal show for kids from 1959 to 1964. And we had animals from all over the world visit Jungle Eye and Buona Don. Buona Don left Detroit for Africa when his kids show went off the air in 64 to live out the fantasy he had actually created here in Detroit. so much to care during the news. A carbon extra special with extra care. Just the like of you. Just the soul. There you go, Kathy Adams of the Channel 2 News. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, aren't you Mrs. Bohannis from down the street? Tell you what, for you, a carbon extra special. <laughs> hey, Harvey, isn't that Fred McLeod, the sports guy on Channel 2? Fred McLeod from I Witness News. Yeah. yeah. Fred McLeod. So much more action. Oh, all those exclusives. So yeah. many highlights. Right. I'll tell you, it's not easy. <laughs> you must really like sports. Almost as much as us. Yeah. I missed it. What happened? Did you see that? Uh, I missed it. What happened? Did you see that? Jeez, I wish I'd get a chance to see it again. You will. Fred McLeod, one of the people to watch on two. It's fantastic. Throughout the last seven decades, Detroiters have ridden the roller coaster of ups and downs with our favorite sports team. Here's a look back at the Lions, the Tigers, the Pistons, and the Red Wings and their biggest moments. Well, 
It's sort of strange for me, but I'm happy I got it. I'm very happy to be back in Detroit, and I hope the people are happy, too. Well, how, do, how does it feel to have won our, our World Series? Oh, it just feels great. Everything's very really wonderful. A great team effort. Last year, the Pistons had a 3-2 lead. They couldn't win one of the last two. Now they'll do it. World champs. Good evening, I'm Joe Glover. And I'm Dana Eubanks. Our top story tonight, it's a sweep. The Detroit Pistons are world champions. After coming to Detroit in 1957 from Fort Wayne, Indiana, they are now the champions of the National Basketball Association, their first ever national title. I wonder how much clothing you've destroyed tonight with cheap champagne. <laughs> yeah, well, fortunately on a blue suit, it doesn't look all that bad. You know, no one can look bad in a blue suit. Even, with, even soaking wet with champagne, but it's the best shampoo I've had in a long, long time. I've been here three years and three years. Everybody said, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And, uh, I think it's time to stop that and uh, just, you know, everybody just quit talking. Let's play and see what happens. People had to make up signs like that. I mean, they ought to just, you know, go to their homes. Sanders still on his feet, and Sanders is gone. What a great win. No one gave us a chance to win this football game, but this football team. There's so many guys hurt. They did a great job, and I'm so proud of this team and my own Mr. Ford for believing in our program. Anytime you win, it's great. But to do it in the face of what they had to do was just incredible. Brenda Moore takes him in on the boards. Red Wings will get it up. One on one. Coming in there. On Nidama. He beat him. Scores. Beautiful goal. I'm thrilled to have my name on the trophy and our team's name back on the trophy with, with the great players of all time. You gotta love the fans. They, they, they stuck through us. It's been some tough times, but unbelievable. You know, I think it's time for another shift, Chris. Come on, get to work there. There we go. Gets better every time. <laughs> That's Chris Draper from the grind line. Captain Stevie, after 14 years, has that cup. The city of Detroit has that cup. It's a great championship. Let's go back to Jennifer Hammond, who has more interviews with players. Sergey, did you ever imagine a victory parade like this in the streets of Detroit? No, it's been amazing, let me tell you. Just uh, never have enough words or enough waves to uh, thank all those people who came here to cheer us up. It was. It's an incredible feeling, really. It's, it's unbelievable. I never thought it would be one day like that. Normally, all of us here compete with each other. But we're together now to make a point. September 27th is no crime day. It's a day everybody's got to join together, just like we have today. A strong showing will rally support for planned job and scholarship programs. Providing hope and opportunity to our youth as alternatives to crime. September 27th, it's time for no crime. Right? Right. 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 Don't do nothing. <laughs> you got time for that? Don't do nothing. That's it. Oh, I like that. Spontaneous. That was good. Well, for the past 75 years, our weather team has been bringing you the forecast, whether it's clear or severe. That's so true. Fox News' Derek Kevra joining us now with a look back at some memorable weather events and the meteorologists who covered them. And these are people that you also grew up watching here in Detroit. That is true. Plenty has changed over the last 75 years when it comes to weather forecasting on TV2. For example, the old school whiteboards have been replaced by high-tech graphic systems. But one thing has remained the same. When a storm is coming, you can still count on the Channel 2 Weather Authority.
This is a TV2 News special report. The Midwest blizzard, the second day. With Joe Glover, Beverly Payne, Vic Caputo, and Barry Zavan. The blizzard of 1978. The two key words to remember when you're thinking of or speaking of road conditions now are impossible and impassable. 19 inches of snow in Lansing, thousands of cars stranded on the road, and buries a van with the forecast. It's the first storm, according to the National Weather Service, in the history of the state of Michigan that has ever affected the entire state at the same time. Let's walk down memory lane to 1964, Anchor Bay. Did you have a chance to be scared? I was scared from the, from the first time I've seen that black cloud coming across there. You ever been caught in a tornado before? No, I haven't. This is the first experience for me. You're in the I last one. I hope it's the last one. Yeah, I hope it's the last one. But it wasn't. The very next year, an even worse outbreak in 1965. The president flew into Toledo after flying over Michigan, surveying some of the tornado damage in Michigan. After he landed at the Toledo Express Airport, he was accompanied here to the Folders Creekside Edition by Mayor John Potter and Ohio Governor Rhodes. He stopped here momentarily and talked to some of the families whose houses were destroyed in the tornado of Palm Sunday. Jump ahead to 1976, where tornadoes were still on Michigan's mind, and a young TV2 morning meteorologist, Jerry Hodak. It's been some time since Detroit was last victimized by a tornado. The date was May 31st, 1954. A funnel touched down two miles east of City Airport, but damage amounted to only $3,000, and there were no injuries. But, of course, there's more than just tornadoes, like the flooding of 86. What does the future hold, then? Certainly more flooding. Vassar is at one of the lowest points in the Saginaw Valley, and flooding here year after year seems inevitable, despite flood control efforts. And residents here simply don't get a chance to forget, with another one just around the corner. In Vassar, Mike Redford, Channel 2 Eyewitness News. Or the heat wave of 87. Water helps keep you cool and rests are a must, but the work takes a toll. You cool yourself with the water every so often, but that's about it. There's nothing you can really do. It's as hot as the devil's kitchen, but for some, a way of life. Weaved into the serious coverage has been some characters. How much money have you made? So far? So far. Towing cars? Towing cars. Towing cars, about $400. Tonight? I just started an hour ago. How much do you think you'll make before the night's over? Maybe $2,000. Are you kidding? No, I don't kid. Here's some money right here. Will you take the microphone and I'll take the truck? Right here. I believe you. Is this green? Put it here. Those are $100 bills. $100 bill. And the evolution of technology. If you've wondered what a true severe weather outbreak looks like on TV2's color radar, here's a classic squall line moving across our viewing area just before 9 o'clock this morning. So whether it was the tornadoes of 1997 or the flooding of August 2014 or the record snow of winter 2013, trusted names like Sonny Elliott. We say it is pleasant, pleasant throughout the state of Michigan and fair, a combination of pleasant and fair, fair kind of weather. I love it. I love it. A young Chuck Gatica. This is a very intense springtime storm and it is moving this way. Jim Smith. On the weather scene, what we have is a situation of very cold air in the eastern part of the country. Chris Edwards. Here's how the radar looks right now. It shows just a few lingering rain showers in the downriver community. Captain Rich Luderman. Now watch what happens on the ground when I pour the bucket of water from this height. And Jessica Starr. The bulk of this moisture will stay up towards our north, but it's also coming into contact with dry air. Through it all, Channel 2 weather legends have been here working for you. We're going to take a half an hour now before our regularly scheduled TV2 News to bring you up to date on the weather in our area and on what is being done about it, how it affects you. Derek Kevra, TV2, Fox 2.
Well, it's only fitting that we began this part of the show with dancing. It turns out dance played a really fun part in our station's history. Oh, yeah. In the late 80s, TV2 was too hot with a show featuring local dancers and DJs. Fair warning, you might spot your mom or dad busting a move. to too hot for the next 30 minutes you will hear today's hottest sounds and see the area's hottest dancing get ready to burn because we're too hot hello and welcome to the debut of too hot here at industry i'm your host kelly taylor let's get right into the fire with some big fun our too hot dancers and the music of inner city Gals from Power 96 FM and TV2 have been scouring the Motor City looking for the hottest nightclub disc jockeys. We've gone from nightclub to nightclub, and we think we found one of the very best. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Music Institute of Detroit, it's Alden M. And Kelly, you know what? I just want to remind you, don't, don't dance spray any room deodorizer. That song's coming from the TV with Mixmaster Scott Gordon from The Shelter. Mix it up, buddy. Disgusting. And now we come to the part of the show that I like best, Kelly. It's when the two hot dancers get to feature themselves in the hot light. That's right. Now, we all know that dancing is an art. And so is mixing, Kelly. It sure is. And here's one of Detroit's finest, Rayford Jones from the Premier Star. you are watching is called the Reebok. It originated in Los Angeles, where being laid back is the word. For Too Hot, I'm Barry Douglas.
Maxi Mixer, Channel 6 from Maxi. The two hot dancers. And especially you. And especially you, Larry, Doc, Elliot. I had a great time. My pleasure. I had fun too, Kelly. Thanks for having me. Join me on Power 96 weekdays from 10 p till 2 a. I'll tune in. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Right here on the dance show that is 2. Bye-bye. Two hottest tape at Industry in Pontiac. Oh, that took That's me wonderful. back. I used to love to watch that show. I think we should bring back Too Hot, and we should have Taryn host it. Well, why not? Right? Why not? Or I Some could just try to dance. I know. It's uh, fun no. stuff. Uh, but we really had a good time today, and thank you so much for joining us in strolling down memory lane. Now, we've shared an exciting past, and we are ready for whatever the future holds. Taryn and I are proud to bring the evening news to you every night right here. We're going to sign off with some of the many faces you've seen on Channel 2 over the years. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. That's the story from the Federal Building. This is Joe Weaver. This is Jack McCarthy reporting from Detroit's Metropolitan Airport. This is John Kelly at the City Hall in Pontiac. This is Jack Lagoff in Wayne, Michigan. This is Jerry Crandall, TV2 News at the Gross Point High School. This is Sylvia Wayne reporting. Tom Green, TV2 News, Capitol Bureau. Willis, TV2 Eyewitness News, Detroit. Vic Caputo, TV2 Eyewitness News in Gaylord. Marilyn Brooks, TV2 Eyewitness News, Detroit. Ron Sanders, TV2 Eyewitness News at the University of Detroit. Nancy McCauley, TV2 Eyewitness News in Trenton. I'm Murray Feldman, TV2 Eyewitness News reporting. Good night. Linda Wright Avery, TV2 Eyewitness News, Joe Lewis Arena. Ron Trumlin, TV2 Eyewitness News at the Detroit Plaza Hotel. Nikki Granberry, TV2 Eyewitness News with the Reagan Motorcade in Romulus. Steve Still for TV2 Eyewitness News Weekend in Northwest Detroit. Amalia Barreda, TV2 Eyewitness News, Pontiac. In Detroit, I'm Dave Game, Eyewitness News Late Edition. From Detroit, Al Allen, Channel 2 Eyewitness News. It's in Kansas City, Dave Llewellyn, Channel 2 Eyewitness News. In Orlando, Florida, Bill Gallagher, Channel 2 Eyewitness News, Late Edition. In downtown Detroit, I'm Roseanne Sarah, Channel 2 Eyewitness News. Livingston County, T.Y. Chang, Channel 2 Eyewitness News. At the Frank Murphy Hall of Justice, Steve Crump, Channel 2 Eyewitness News. Catherine Lahan, TV2 Eyewitness News. At Federal Court in downtown Detroit, Vince Wade, TV2 Eyewitness News. In Midland, Amy Jacobson, TV2 Eyewitness News.